Hello everybody, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we are returning to War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, our Let's Play series against Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. It is March 30th of 1942, Japan is down to its final two days of its amphibious bonus, where it gets to unload troops on islands sort of offensively, very uh, beneficially. The game gives them a huge advantage to unloading troops uh, in hostile territory up until April 1st. So it's March 30th. We've seen the Japanese landing troops all over left and right trying to take advantage of that. But as soon as April 1st hits, the game sort of starts to penalize them and slow those landings down so that... Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know exactly what the logic is, other than to say that Japan was incredibly aggressive early in the war, and then as things got uh, got kind of further along, uh, they were they were not as able to take over undefended islands and other things like that, because there weren't any left. Um, in any event, that's the situation right now. It is March 30th of 42, uh, the second to last turn for the combat results for the Japanese to land troops. They've been landing on Palembang, the northern tip of Palembang, and I've sent my own heavy cruisers into Port Blair to bombard the place uh, to hopefully weaken it and uh, maybe attrit out the Japanese paratroopers who landed there like a month ago. Um, so you can see here we've got our own heavy cruisers, the Exeter, uh, and then a couple of other heavy cruisers are dropping the hammer with some 8-inch eight inch, eight inch, uh, pain coming down on the Japanese troops there that I'm thinking are largely without supplies, although they certainly could have been bringing supplies in via, via cargo plane. But you can see we've got the Exeter bombarding, we've got the Cornwall bombarding, and I think we've got a third heavy cruiser in that task force as well. Um, that had just recently come out of Colombo with fresh ammunition stocks to bombard the enemy. We sent him in at night, uh, and we sent him in at flank speed so that hopefully they can pull back before the AM phase in, in the event that the Japanese have any sort of Bettys or Nels set to naval attack. I don't think the Japanese do, because if they did have Bettys or Nels set to naval attack operating out of Victoria Point or Bangkok or any of those other places, they'd likely be bomb bombing Rangoon, where we've been unloading the 7th Australian Infantry Division. And so I don't think it's likely that they've got troops set to uh, set to unload, or, or sorry, set to, to bomb naval targets. So we'll go ahead and fast forward through here. You can see we've got some light cruisers as well. And uh, here, here is the bombarding task force. Three heavy cruisers, three light cruisers. It didn't do a ton of damage, but I don't think the Japanese have a ton of troops there to begin with. So it did uh, disable seven Japanese infantry squads. Uh, it disabled five non-combatant squads uh, of the third SNLF unit, which had been pair dropped in there a while back. So you can see it did a little bit of damage. Uh, nothing permanently killed, but if they don't have supplies to replenish their losses, then those guys uh, will be made much less effective. So, you can see here that's the end of that turn. Meanwhile, Japan is landing troops on Cebu, which I don't think they've done before. So, again, they're trying to take advantage of those final uh, final days they have with those amphibious bonuses here. They're unloading elements of the... It doesn't tell me what they're unloading, but they're bombarding elements of the 81st Filipino Infantry Division. You can see 41 Japanese casualties lost, mostly just disabled troops uh, lost in sort of the, the hubbub of the landings. And you can see an, the actual landing here of the, uh, an SLNF squad um, and naval... So it looks like these are elements of a naval guard unit that are unloading. They suffered four squads destroyed uh, in those com combat units there. So they're unloading at Cebu. Uh, meanwhile, destroyer minesweepers are bombarding and they're unloading more troops to the east of Sura Baja. And I know I mispronounce that every time and I always forget when I'm streaming live to remember how to pronounce it. And yet I never do. Uh, allied casualties on that bombardment there. You can see some Japanese troops coming ashore. They lose one squad destroyed. And then we've got some troops landing. Is this at Leyte or in the vicinity of Leyte? Um, more troops coming ashore. A lot of these small little islands in the southern Philippines, the Japanese just simply haven't landed troops there. We don't have supplies there, so those guys are going to be easy easy conquests for the Japanese, but uh, they're really behind on some of those places, so they're sort of filling in the gaps of places that they haven't taken yet, and even including some unoccupied bases in the Dutch East Indies, in the Gilbert Islands, other places like that that are still technically controlled by the Allies, uh, but by which uh, the Japanese uh, likely would want to take sooner rather than later. It's less of an issue for unoccupied islands because an inefficient unloading doesn't really hurt the Japanese there, but it definitely hurts in uh, places like uh, uh, Palembang or Borneo or other places where the Allies have troops and the Japanese do need, to unland need to land in front of Allied forces. 
So you can see quite a few cargo ships continuing to unload in those areas. Hey, coffee filter, how you doing? Okay. Those pairs are eating fish now. Maybe, like a G-Man, but again, he could be sneaking supplies in via small airdrops as well, which I wouldn't be surprised. We do have some buffaloes on Blair that should help prevent that, but we're really low on supply ourselves on Port Blair, so I did order some cargo ships to bring some uh, extra supplies for our troops there to make sure that uh, we don't run low on supply and get kind of starved out as well. All right, so you can see a whole bunch of landings here. That seems to be the theme of this particular turn. Not a lot else has happened so far other than our bombardment on Blair. Go ahead and fast forward a little bit. Uh, the SS Sailfish is operating near the yellow, okay, I guess in the Strait of Tsushima or very, very close there. Uh, and, uh, you know, nothing happened there. Meanwhile, the Stingray firing some torpedoes against a Japanese destroyer transport, an APD in the Java Sea. Uh, but it's torpedoes. Was that a hit but no explosion, by the way? I think that was a hit, but no explosion. So that's fun. Y you never want to forget, you got the Mark 14, which is completely ineffective. Meanwhile, a Japanese submarine torpedoes a cargo ship, the Steelmaker, off the coast of Perth. Those are empty cargo ships returning to uh, Colombo. Japanese also tried to torpedo a destroyer of ours off the east coast, a four stacker, uh, but those torpedoes miss. So you can see quite a few submarines operating in and around the uh, Australia area. And now we're into the AM air operation phase. So we've got Catalinas spotting Japanese shipping all over the map, as well as Japanese uh, aircraft spotting our own cargo ships unloading at Rangoon and a couple of other uh, task forces. You can see they're detecting some stuff near Vancouver off the U.S. West Coast. Uh, some seagulls reporting some stuff off the jam or off the southern Australian coast, which is kind of interesting. That's kind of in the vicinity of where our carriers are. By the way, Brass Monkey, not sure if you're watching or not, but I did see the resub shortly before the stream. So Brass Monkey seventy six, thank you very much for the resub. Thirteen months now. That is a long time, and I do appreciate the continued support. Meanwhile, the Japanese uh, sweeping over Batavia. Doesn't look like we had any cap up there. Same over the southern southeastern tip of Java. Some Oscars also sweeping over Batavia, and then they've got some G3M2 Nels coming in here to bomb uh, the airfield there. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. 11 Nels damage. They came in at 12,000 feet. This claims they damaged two Hurricanes, one DO-24, one Liberator, and one Catalina. We'll have to see about that. You know, obviously I don't like not having a cap up. I don't like taking sort of free damage, but um, I also don't really have the air power there to resist except for the occasional sortie to try and catch the Japanese by surprise. So we'll have to see what the situation is there. Some more Nels hitting southern Borneo. He's got a lot of bombing raids going on all over against different units that are kind of cut off and isolated and things like that. So he's obviously trying to whittle down some of our units that have been driven out of objective hexes but which haven't been destroyed. And a lot of these units are going to all sort of starve out or die eventually. But uh, by bombing him with his bombers, he actually is able to sort of get some free XP for his, his aircraft to help train up some raw crews uh, by doing combat missions, uh, even if, you know, with basically no risk. Meanwhile, we've got 13 B5N1 Kates, which are torpedo bombers for Japanese aircraft carriers. I don't know if they have any naval, like, land-based Kate units or if they're all based on carriers. That would be useful to know. Because I don't think, well, I don't know if the Mini Kidu Butai carries any Kates, which could be an indication of where maybe the, the main fleet is, unless he based them out of Kendari. Uh, he could pull them off a carrier, too. But you can see here they're attacking at Ambon with two 250-kilogram general purpose bombs. Didn't really do anything there. We've also got 13 Sallies hitting here on Sumatra. Panzer 8018, thank you very much for the resub there. Four, four months now at Tier 1. Appreciate the support. Meanwhile, we've got some Sallies coming in here. And then we've got Lilies also hitting near Moresby. Again, 45, 48 casualties, 5 squads destroyed. So those guys are starving, and that makes them really vulnerable to enemy air attack to basically just finish them off. A bunch of bombers hitting at Sabang, some Sallies here hitting the troops there. We still hold that base for now. We'll see what the Japanese bring against us. Meanwhile, some Ans and Sallies hitting uh, near Bengkulis. 
23 Sonyas hitting our troops at Batan, which is kind of an important thing because those guys are set to march. So if he hits them with enough bombers, the units will auto-convert into combat, which slows their marching progress down. Remember, we're trying to pursue two divisions of his, which we attacked a while back, uh, toward Clark Field. But he can slow us down by bombing us. Doesn't look like he actually bombed the troops, though. He just bombed the airfield, which could reduce supply, but I don't think we'll slow our troops down at all. No brass, oh, welcome, welcome, but I did thank you for the resub, so I'll thank you again. Okay, just lots and lots of bombing all over the place. The troops in Bataan are marching to Clark Field. We drove, we actually, so the Japanese had us pinned in at, at Bataan. We launched an all-out counterattack when we still had some supplies left. The Japanese only had two divisions covering at Bataan, and our force drove the Japanese back with heavy losses to Clark Field. And based on our intelligence before the attack, I don't think the Japanese had any other units at Clark Field. So our hope was that we could keep driving them back out of Clark Field and maybe advance on Manila, get a bunch more supply by take, retaking Manila, and completely throw their, their plans in the Pacific into disorder. Although Clark Field is a level 3 defensive terrain, so frankly at this point my opinion is that's a very unlikely thing to occur. Meanwhile, apparently I have Catalina's at Batan that I forgot about and ordered them to attack his invasion force at Cebu, and it looks like the Japanese Zeros there that are, you know, running cap, uh, basically just shredded my Catalina's before they could get to the, get to the, um, enemy shipping. It does say these zeros are from the Soryu, by the way. That's kind of interesting. So does that mean the Kitty Butai has either pulled aircraft off and landed them somewhere, or is the Kitty Butai providing uh, coverage with some fighters over Cebu for the invasion task force there? That could indicate that the Japanese main carrier fleet is somewhere in the vicinity of the Philippines then, uh, given that those that squadron is from the Soryu. Meanwhile, we've got some Hudsons and some Falcons coming in on a Japanese invasion task force in the Java Sea. Well, actually, I don't know if it's an invasion task force, but a task force in the Java Sea. They've got six zeros providing cover to them as well. That group got completely shot to pieces. One Hudson made it through the screen of fighters, dropped its bombs, and did no damage. Looks like we lost one Hudson destroyed, one Falcon, and one Hudson damaged. These fighters are from the Shoho, which matches with what we know. We've seen the mini Kidubutai operating in the Java Sea. So if that intelligence is accurate, it's telling us that the mini Kidubutai is still in Java, whereas the, the full-blown Japanese carrier fleet with the fleet carriers is, is operating somewhere to the east and either probably in the Celebs Sea providing long-range cap, but could also be in the Sulu Sea or up in somewhere in the Philipp Philippines region. So that might have actually given us a little bit of intelligence on one on where at least where some of the aircraft from those groups are. Maybe not the ships themselves, because again, you can base air units from ships to shore. But I don't know where he'd be operating the, the Soryu or why he'd be operating the Soryu's air groups out of ba land bases in the Philippines. They have land-based zero units, so if you really wanted to do that, I think you'd just pull them out of Formosa and put them on, like, Luzon and then have them run a long-range cap. Why they'd actually be carrier aircraft, unless it's some sort of misdirection, is less clear to me. You know, it's a good question, just not good in terms of how would an observer know? They probably wouldn't, um, but in terms of the game, it, it tells us. Oh, okay. That's a good point, Neuhauser. If they've got, like, a, a, a squadron code on the tail, that fe feels like something maybe you would want to paint over? Like, if you were actually, you know, in, in a war? Japanese carriers had very specific tail codes. I mean, I, okay, that's good to know. It feels like an operational security problem, though, Neuhauser. Would you really, wouldn't you want to paint over that? Meanwhile, the Steelmaker uh, just was sunk. That was the cargo ship that was torpedoed off the coast of Australia earlier in the stream. Further landings at Cebu, so the Japanese bring in more troops ashore. Nobody painted over their tail codes? Interesting. I don't know. To me, that just feels like something you would want to do. It is interesting that the Japanese are bringing... Um, <laughs> you're in a binge spot and have time to write down a tail code. <laughs> I mean... You know, maybe someone is observing from a hill that's not getting strafed or something. 
Okay. But interesting that he's bringing reinforcements to Ambon. Makes sense because he's had a brigade tied down there for like a month and a half. Um, and he hasn't been able to dislodge our troops there. So makes sense that he'd bring reinforcements in. I'm curious how much he's bringing in in the way of reinforcements. Meanwhile, a Japanese bombardment attack at Quilin here in southern China. I'm still not... I'm not sure if he has enough troops here yet to overrun us. He's got four or five divisions and one mortar unit. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six and a quarter cores. Obviously, his units have much better quality, but we're in pretty good defensive terrain with level three forts. I think if he really wants to take this position, he probably needs to bring in some engineers. And the bombardments aren't really going in his favor either. You can see he lost 88 casualties. We only lost 13. So the counter-battery bombardment actually did more damage to him than we took. And we even disabled some of his engineers. So that would make his attacking more difficult. Meanwhile, at Sabang, you can see there's two infantry regiments attacking at Sabang. These are nearly full-strength units. A full-strength infantry regiment is usually around 107 to 120 uh, assault points and you can see these guys were both over 90 so in pretty good shape they're attacking we've got a territory regiment and a corpse uh, something battalion and uh, it looks like these troops were pushed back by these Japanese troops so Sabang at the tip of Sumatra has fallen to the Japanese that may make life in the in the um, Benga Bay of Bengal more difficult if he puts air units on Sabang because they can really reach out and sort of interdict shipping to Rangoon, so that's going to be something we have to be mindful of. I don't think he has any, he doesn't yet, he doesn't have any aviation units there in that, that attacking force, so he'll need to bring some reinforcements in if he wants to do that. That'll probably give us a couple of days. Meanwhile, you can see in that attack we lost 1,000 casualties. He only lost 54. Uh, 45 squads destroyed, 30 disabled, 52 non-combatants destroyed, 14 disabled, 10 engineers, and then 13 guns lost. Three units retreat, one surrendered. Bombardment attack at Dojakarta here on the southern tip, or I guess the central southern portion of Java by the 144th Regiment against our base force there. I mean, they should be able to just overrun us there next turn if they launch an attack. Bombardment attack at Kagan, which the Japanese have still failed to take in Mindanao. They are wearing us down, though, and even though that's good defensive terrain, we're so low on supply that I think the next de deliberate attack there will succeed. Meanwhile, uh, landing at Cebu, it looks like he landed three naval guard units here. Feels like he might be a little desperate for troops if he's trying to take on regiments with guard units, although he may still succeed. A recon regiment. Interesting that he landed a recon regiment here with some armor. I would have. They're they're not connected with Sor Sorabaya or Soraba or I, I'm sorry, whoever's watching this is a VOD later. I know you guys always correct me, but I don't think they're connected via land to these guys. So. I'm not sure. I mean, it's going to take time to load those guys back up with some armor there. Uh, just took an island here in the Bismarck Sea. Uh, Sar Sarmi here on the New Guinea coast. Beru in the Gilbert Islands. A bunch of unoccupied bases here. The Goodyear stock is heading down. You're talking about the rubber plantations, Brass Monkey? coffee um okay so it looks like edu expanded fortifications charters towns expanded fortifications a couple different bases of ours forts finished building up okay uh adjusting aviation support all right let's fast forward through this so some pilots ready for reassignment in the pilot pools, bomber groups arriving, some different units arriving in the East Coast. I think I'm due for some actual pretty considerable reinforcements in the Middle East for the British forces this turn. We'll find that out in a moment here. So a bunch of units arriving in the East Coast, AHQ arriving in uh, India, 4th Corps arriving at Madras, uh, 9th Marine Regiment arrived in San Diego, so that's good news. And 70th British Infantry Division arrived in Karachi. The 14th Brigade, 16th Brigade, and 23rd Brigades arrive at Aden. So we got three new infantry brigades that are unrestricted that just arrived in the Middle East. So that's good news for us. Should allow us to start reinforcing 
some of those areas in the um, India Burma theater pretty considerably with some some decent British troops. So that's it for the replay. Let's jump into the turn here. So if we go here, we'll take a look at Aiden. You can see here we've got three new brigades, 23rd, 16th, and 14th, all with 120 assault value, as well as the 45th Re Recce Regiment, which is an armored unit. They consist of Humber 1s, which are like armored recon, armored recon cars. I don't see any other armored units, so they just, again, it's just a recon unit, so it's not really like a tank unit. Um, the British brigades don't, Ooh, 80, exp I thought these guys were going to be green. These guys are veterans. 80 experience, 90 morale. These are some of the best troops I have in the game. The problem is British reinforcements have absolutely terrible like re reinforcement rates. But these 108 British infantry sections or uh, sections and Bren sections and anti-tank guns, these are going to be a really good if light unit. They don't carry a lot of heavy equipment, so you're going to want to pair them with some independent artillery units to kind of buff them up a bit. But these are three really good units. So we'll have to see about moving them either to India or to Burma or maybe or maybe to Sri Lanka. That We don't have a very strong force there. Meanwhile, our cruisers bombarded Port Blair and then immediately pulled back here. So they're on their way back to Colombo to replenish the Dorsetshire, or the Dorsetshire, the Cornwall, and the Exeter, the Trump, Emerald, and Cape Town. Took a bit of systems damage, but a nice little bombardment there for those guys. Did some damage to the Japanese. Meanwhile, we also have Task Force 227, which is a light cargo ship task force of four AKLs and one AK that has arrived at uh, at Port Blair. Apparently, they're only 9,000, just shy of 10,000 tons total. So these are all some really, really light ships. You can see this guy is, where's the tonnage here? Only 2,700 tons, 1,000 tons. So these guys are really small ships that allows them to dock at Port Blair, and so they've got 8,000 supply that they're going to immediately start unloading at Blair because we are very low on supply for our own troops here, uh, and that'll that'll get their, their supply situation up in better shape. So maybe we can drive this Japanese unit back a little bit. Do we have any artillery in these guys? The Paris don't. The base force doesn't. I don't have any artillery to, like, try and bombard these guys and figure out, like, how strong they actually are. I don't know that I want to go directly into a deliberate attack. Can the escort bombard the Japanese? Um, which escort? Like a G-man. Oh, the guys with the cargo ships? The, the gunboat? I don't know that a four-inch quick-firing gunboat's going to do a whole lot of damage against enemy troops. Uh, if we take a look, let's see, we've got a new unit that arrived at Karachi, right? The 70th British Infantry Division, which is massively under strength here. All they have is combat engineers? They got a good amount of artillery. They got like 70 guns, but they don't really have a very large... They have like no infantry. I don't know why you'd even call these guys an infantry division. They've got the kit of a division from an artillery perspective, the 72 25-pounders. That's definitely infantry grade. The four and a half inch field guns... So, I mean, like, they've got the equipment of an infantry division, but they don't actually have the troops. They just have engineers. So it's almost like a support division or, like, an artillery reserve division just based off the, the outfit there. But that'll still be useful. They're restricted to India, by the way. So I can't uh, load them up on transports. They're heavy restricted. Unkendivable. Thank you very much for the sub. Appreciate the support. Two months with Prime. So they're a good unit to have, but they're kind of anchored to India. I think we also might have gotten another division. I don't know if it's the 30. We got a we got someone at Madras, which is... Where's Madras again? It's down here. They may have actually the 4th Indian Corps, so we got a headquarters unit at Madras. And then is the 26th Division new? I think they're new as well. They're, they're a restricted, although it's a soft restrict, so I could could unlock these guys. This is a pretty darn good division here. Over 200 infantry sections of Indian 1942 equipments, 108 British infantry sections, a good deal of artillery. So th this is a really good unit, although their experience and morale is low. We can train these guys up to be an effective fighting force. 
but it'll it'll take some time to get the twenty six to be to be a good unit. It's thirty morale and thirty experience is pretty low at the time. You can see here Sabang fell and it drove these troops inland. So I kind of want to see if I can't strat them. Can I? Hmm. All right. Well, let's move these guys down toward Meden, or if not Meden, then at least to uh, Lang Sa. Can't throw them on rail cars because they're not at a head at a unit that has. They have to be at a base to do that. Meanwhile, what's our air, air force look at uh, look like at um, Batavia? So we do have two hurricanes that are damaged, but we've got sixteen ready fighters. So we could try and throw a cap up this turn. We've got twelve aircraft that aren't ready. Four of them are Catalinas. Um, two of the hurricanes, two B-17s. These guys were already not ready in the previous turn. And then we've got one Liberator ready and one not ready. Where's the other unit here? These guys are at Darwin. So we're going to go ahead and fly the one ready B-24 out to Darwin because I was trying to get him out of the Dutch East Indies before it fell. All right, the B-25s are, are set to search right now, but I'd rather they honestly attack enemy naval units. So we might want to look at that. Their accuracy, 3% accuracy. Wow, they suck. Wow, they're so bad. Uh, you can see a whole bunch of shipping is clustered in the Java Sea. Um, I was going to try and send the carriers up that way maybe to do a raid. So they left Esperance this last turn. But given the sub-activity to the west of Perth, we may want to divert them further west to try and avoid getting detected. Unless we want to just have them hug the coast, because the Japanese subs seem to be sitting further west. So that's another option. But the uh, Allied carriers are here. The Enterprise, Yorktown, and Lexington are in one task force under Vice Admiral Wilson Brown. And then the Saratoga is paired with the HMS Indomitable uh, for a second task force under Rear Admiral Raymond Spruance. And I'm thinking we could just send them up north... And then the plan would be to kind of hover near Christmas Island. If the Japanese shipping is still in the Java Sea, jut east a little bit, try and hammer them with one or two raids, then pull out before the Japanese can respond. Who knows, maybe we'd get lucky and smash the mini Kitty Butai. If there's a situation that develops to the south, we could withdraw north. Or if the situation in the north develops, we could withdraw south. It would have been better if they were ready there now. They'll probably arrive a little bit too late. I'm guessing most of that shipping will clear out post-April 1st when those uh, when those benefits go away. Uh, kit of a division, manpower of a brigade. Yep, P. Warner, that's kind of that's kind of true for that one division. Meanwhile, these guys are almost starved out, so I don't think Mindanao will hold out much longer. We're at less than a quarter of our, our needed supply there. Uh, Japanese reinforcements landed Am at Ambon, where we've still got the Sparrow Brigade, which is really kind of... And I don't know if he knows we have this here, but we did reinforce Ambon with the Sparrow Brigade, which is a really good Australian unit. Um, 63 experience, 87 morale, CMF infantry. It's a little bit of a waste to have them here, but in a sense, if he doesn't know we've got them there, there's a chance they could they could throw a wrench in his plans, although they're down to one-third supply. I've been trying to fly some supplies in from Australia, but uh, we'll see if those additional reinforcements that he landed last turn um, allow him to overwhelm us there. Meanwhile, we are also pulling out the Gull Battalion here, which still has three AV, five infantry sections stuck at uh, Kolaka. But we have been pulling them out slowly via air into Batavia. So you can see the Gull Battalion slash one. Uh, another very good Australian unit here of Experience 61. They've got 25 infantry sections that have pulled back into Batavia. And Batavia is now over 1,000 assault value on the defensive there. Meanwhile, Batavia itself is at 86%, so working its way toward level 4 fortifications. It would be great if we can get to level 4. My understanding with the way the game treats it is level th 1 to 3 forts aren't super strong. But when you cross that threshold to four, things start getting really tough. Now, he could bring his navy in to bombard the hell out of us, but... Those three brigades are attached to the Eastern Army. Like the 70th Division, could I attach them? No. I, if you're talking about the three British divisions up or brigades up here, these guys have no parent units, so there's no option to reform them into something bigger. These guys all have to operate independently. 
It would be fun if I could attach him to the seventh Briti British at uh, at Karachi, though. That would make a really strong unit, but I just can't. Meanwhile, the troops north of Port Moresby getting hit pretty hard by Japanese bombers. Um, you can see everybody's down to no effective units here. The 44th Indian Brigade is getting hit pretty hard. All of its units are suppressed. No supply. The 45th Indian Brigade has a, has quite a few Indian sections left, both um, uh, suppressed and not. I've been trying to slowly pull some troops out to Cairns. I don't have enough sort of air transport to pull much out, but I have been trying to pull the, the Port Moresby Brigade back. So you can see here we've pulled about three of its assault value and 33 supplies back. Um, we've got about 19 more suppressed CMF infantry sections still north of Moresby that have no supply. But we have managed to pull a handful of those troops out. Uh, looks like three infantry sections, two Bren sections, you know, a fair amount of support and some mortars and anti-tank guns. But we're trying to very, you know, get what we can out of these out of these units here and reconstitute them. We already successfully pulled out the second, fourth Indian uh, independent company and the second, seventh, much smaller units, but we did succeed there. Um, meanwhile, the Americal Division is over here, so just south of the Tonga Islands, almost to Australia. We could try and divert them to Burma if we think it's safe enough to get them there, but uh, this is one of the best American units in the game right now, and uh, it's a it's a full American division that is close to Australia. Um, we also have some battleships at Vavu. So I did go ahead and before the stream started, I did go ahead and replenish them, but they are kind of low on fuel, so I really need more fuel. We stripped out what was left of a replenishment task force and its fuel stock. Uh, and then I've also got, I thought I had a few, I thought I had some fuel coming from somewhere else to them. Maybe we'll send these guys with their 14,000 fuel that was on the way to Tahiti. Meanwhile, I've also got uh, a base force unit that is headed to Tahiti, and I think I was going to unload them there to try and build Tahiti up a little bit as a transit hub. And we've also got about 3,100 troops that are on their way to the Coast Coast Islands, a combat engineer regiment, field artillery battalion, base force, and another field artillery battalion. Not sure if we're really going to send them to Coast Coast or not, but uh, it's a good group of supporting units, and that combat engineer unit will be very v valuable in trying to take enemy fortified islands and stuff like that. We have landed troops on the Coast Coast Islands, so we've got two Australian infantry battalions here, just to make sure that they can't like just drop a really small SNL, SNLF unit and then use this as an airbase to cut the supply link between India and Australia. Uh, meanwhile, we do have an AVD at Baker Island with 170 supply. And we've also and that's providing aviation support to a small Catalina task force here. So we did pick up some Japanese troops landing here at Niku. They're also moving southeast. I don't know if they still are or not. Meanwhile, we also picked up an enemy task force here moving east with an AMC, probably re resupplying Canton Island. Um, I also had... What else? There was one other thing I wanted to show. Oh, our political points are up to about 1,645 which means I could go ahead and convert one of our divisions here. I think they're at San Francisco. I've been saying this for a while. But the 27th Infantry Division here at San Francisco uh, could be unlocked. They need about 1593. So we could unlock these guys. But at the moment, I don't have any transport. I really need more transports at on the U.S. East Coast. Most of them are busy. But I need more troop transports, so I haven't converted these guys yet because there's really no point in spending the political points if I can't actually drag these troops out anywhere. So until I can drag those troops somewhere, it doesn't make a lot of sense to, to use the political points to unlock that division. Um, although I guess the one reason it might make sense to do it sooner rather than later is then I can start having them draw reinforcements without their political point cost going up. So maybe we should do that while we... Uh, while we wait for the, the cargo ships to show up to be able to load them up. Maybe I should do that. Um, how's Java holding? I mean, they're holding. The Japanese have landed at Semarang and taken that. They'll probably take Bandoing next turn. We do have one armored unit here, but it, it says it's a mobile <laughs> battalion of an armored unit, but they're not allowed to move. They're static and forced to stay there. It almost looks like World War... Like, maybe those are Churchills. For a second, I thought they were World War I tanks, but they look like Churchills. Uh, they're Marmon Harrington, though, according to the, the game. 
Um, so they'll probably take that. That'll effectively cut Java in two. So we'll have to see. Uh, meanwhile, not a lot else happening on the U.S. East Coast. We've got some ASW patrols out. We've been moving some aircraft around. Um, if we take a look at Cape Town, I think we've got some troops that are going to be arriving there before too long. We've got 9,000 troops here of an infantry battalion or infantry regiment here, the 53rd, as well as a field artillery and a U.S. Marine Corps First Air Wing. Uh, those guys are on the way to Cape Town. They'll be there in 15 days, so about two weeks. We've got another task force with 7,200 troops that'll be there in five days uh, to Cape Town. They're carrying a tank battalion. Actually, this is a really good unit, a U.S. Army tank battalion, as well as uh, the 101st, or sorry, 102nd Infantry Battalion, the 1st Battalion of the 102nd Infantry Regiment, that is, uh, and then a pursuit group and a combat engineer unit. I would love to get this combat engineer unit and this tank battalion into Burma. Those guys could be game changers and really stymie the Japanese advance there because they've got, I think they've got, what are their tanks again? M3 Stuart light tanks. Eh, they're not great tanks, I guess. All, they're kind of light. Haha. <laughs> but they're, they're still a lot. They're, they're pretty good. The Japanese don't have great anti-tank stuff. Um, and then the combat engineers would be incredibly valuable uh, in that area. Um, not sure about the pursuit groups. I guess we can always use more aircraft in Burma, so maybe we'll send those P-39 Aero Cobras to Burma as well. And then the first 102nd, we'll, we may have to think about that because I'd like to form them into the 102nd separate regiment. And the rest of the regiment is actually at Christchurch. So we may divert those guys to New Zealand so they can form the, the full regiment there. Um, so that's another 7,000 troops that are on their way into Colombo, and they'll be there in five days. They're way better than the Moran Harringtons, though. Yeah, I'm sure they are. Meanwhile, we've got a couple other units here. They're a little bit smaller, 2,400 troops here. Looks like uh, just a couple of marine defense units and marine raiders. I probably will put some of these units on some of these islands around here so the Japanese don't try and sneak in and, and take some like un ungarrisoned or lightly garrisoned islands like at Adu or Diego Garcia or some of the Maldive islands just to make sure that the Japanese can't drop. Again, their, their amphib bonuses drop way down. But I don't have anything on some of these Maldive Islands, and if they were to cut the supply to Sri Lanka, even just temporarily, it would really throw a wrench in things. So it might not be a bad idea to have some of those guys stay there. Another another one of these battalions here, the 3rd, 102nd, uh, apparently on this troop transport. I thought they were all in Christchurch. And then we've got some AV air transport units, 35th Pursuit Group, 22nd Bomber Group, 23rd Bomber Group, uh, some Marauders on these guys. What are the other groups carrying? Warhawks, Catalinas. I don't know why I sent a HQ unit of Warhawks. That that was a mistake, I think. And then this group's the 35th Pursuit Group, which has 16 more Air Cobras. I really sent a lot of P-39s and P-400s. Um, okay, so those guys are all you know showing up here at Cape Town before too long. Meanwhile, in terms of the ships under repair, we can see that the repulse is down to 38 days, boys. Just a little more than a month away to get the repulse back in our in our fleet, which is gonna just feel so great to have a battle cruiser. I just love me some print, some some British battle cruisers. They get a bad rap. Gotta love those torpedoes on her. Maybe give the Japanese some what's what. The Prince of Wales still a ways away. Also, I did get another American battleship that uh, was repaired from Pearl Harbor. So if we go to San Francisco here, the Arizona's 29 days away. So no big explosion for her. No memorial at uh, Pearl Harbor. She survived. And uh, she'll, she'll be ready in about a month. And the Maryland actually just finished up be getting ready. So the Maryland is ready. And I think we also did a upgrade for her uh, because she is now sporting radar, air search and surface search. 16 inches on the Maryland. So good news for, for, for the U.S. fleet with those two battleships almost done or, or already done. Um, it looks like the West Virginia is still 82 days away. Do we have someone? We've got someone at San Diego. The Pennsylvania is about five months away. Is that all of them? I know we've got a bunch of them already deployed, forward deployed. So that's kind of that's all of them for now.
But uh, but yeah, the rest of the battleships are here at Vavu, which is feels a little bit vulnerable actually. Maybe they're a little bit forward deployed, not having a ton of fuel. Six battleships. If his carriers were to steam in here and just like obliterate us, that would be that'd be bad news. So hopefully his fleet carriers aren't anywhere around there. We've got a bit of patrol aircraft to kind of detect where he's at. I'd probably just try and drop him into a port and hide him there. Okay. Um, this game just no no good not good. This game actually typically does a pretty good job of giving you a fairly realistic Pearl Harbor. Um, the problem I think in in our case was XCRG had was brand new to the game at the time he launched the attack. He sent a lot of zeros in on like low level strafing. He took a lot of damage. Um, so it was he didn't have a great great rolls and he 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 made some mistakes. Meanwhile, we're unloading a whole bunch of fuel at Perth from Cape Town and from, uh, I think, uh, yeah, all of them are from Cape Town or Colombo, uh, so Sri Lanka and, and South Africa. Um, and you can see here we're up to just shy of 300,000 fuel at Perth. Um, meanwhile, the 7th Division is still unloading at Rangoon, so we've got just a little bit more supply coming off the Empress Australia. We disbanded three troop transports into the port to free up some dock space. We've got some other elements of the 7th Australia still coming ashore, but the bulk of the division, all of the infantry, and a lot of the division is already ashore here of this crack Australian infantry division. Uh, we are still a little bit light uh, on our mortars. I think there's like 20 more mortars to unload. Uh, I think there's... Are there more more on here? Intents? I don't think so. There's still some more motorized support to unload. About 130. Those are That's heavy. The support is almost all ashore. The engineers and the engineer vehicles are all ashore. The anti-tank guns are still a little bit light, so we want to get those ashore as well. But the good news is the 7th Australia is in relatively good shape um, here. I'm kind of tempted. Co. Newhauser, I don't know if you guys are around, but I've got another task force here, which I was considering bombarding Port Blair with, with three British battleships. But I'm kind of tempted to maybe have them go a little bit further north and then come to south and bombard his troops at Molman. He's building up a force here, 16 units, almost 40,000 troops. Not enough to drive me out of southern Burma quite yet. I, but the better strategy for him is to go over the mountains of Chiang Mai and flank us through the Pegu line. I would think he'll do that eventually. No indication he's in position to do that yet. I don't think he can effectively push north from Molman yet. But one thing that could interrupt him is if we can bring some some battleship hammer down on him at Molman, we could potentially wreck some of these divisions, which I'm assuming based on the number of guns and AVs, these units are probably almost all either support units or Royal Thai Infantry Divisions. They don't have enough artillery or armored vehicles to be Japanese divisions yet, so I assume he's still letting some of his troops in Singapore replenish. He also obviously pulled some of the fresher Singapore troops into Sumatra and into Java to try and assist the invasions there. But I'm tempted to bombard them at Molmun because they are exposed there. The other, the other consideration uh, would be just to nuke what he has left at Port Blair. And then the other thing that I'm also kind of considering, although I'm not sure I want to reveal my hand yet, is I've got about just shy of 40 B-17s located at Mandalay. So I could, I could launch a raid this next turn with 32 B-17s and we could go for Molmun. It's within range. Bangkok is at extreme range, and not all the B-17s can make it there. Um, but we could shift them to Rangoon and bomb them from there, or we could just go after Molmun with our heavy units, or we could go after Chiang Mai to see what's there. But I, I suspect the better route maybe to go for Molmun with the battleships. We also could take our P-38s that are up here, the one squadron of active P-38s that we have in the game, and base them out of Rangoon and maybe sweep out over Bangkok if he's got any fighters there. We see 21 bombers, 21 fighters, and 20 auxiliaries, so not a huge air force at Bangkok. But it, I don't know. The other thing we could do is try and just hit the oil facilities at Bangkok. If we can destroy some of the refineries or some of the, uh, some of the refineries, it could, in, it, it could, you know, impact his ability to produce oil very slightly. So I'm not sure about that. Meanwhile, on the Chinese front, uh, we can see here the bombardments occurring at Quilin. Quilin is trying to build its forts up. It's at 27%. Uh, 
the troops here, we've got about 2,000 AV here. The guys don't seem terribly dis disrupted or fatigued from those Japanese bombardments, since in fact, barely at all. Uh, I am bringing a small amount of reinforcements here to Kuilin. Uh, they'll be arriving in the next couple of days. So two or three days, we'll get about 240 assault points more, so about half of a division of Japanese troops equivalent. Meanwhile, we have been pulling troops south of Cyan back a little bit because there's a large Japanese force moving to flank Cyan from the west. And we're starting to put troops into the mountain positions here in the north north of Cyan because eventually, in the not-too-distant future, we'll likely have to evac Cy evacuate Cyan and move north. Um, that's the situation in China. I mean, if he's only got 20 fighters at Bangkok, I'm not too worried about bombing it. That's not going to do much damage to B-17s. They're probably Kates, too. I would guess he doesn't have zeros there. But I'll think about it. I already showed you guys where the carriers were. How's the fort building going on Fiji? Fiji is at level 4, working toward level 5 at Suva. And then Nadi is level 3, working on 4. Not making a ton of progress there. Pago is at 3, I think. Almost to 4. It's 60%. Also, didn't we get another Marine Regiment this turn? Uh, these guys aren't unlocked, right? Yeah, I can't. That division is permanently locked. But we got the 7th Marine Div Regiment and the 9th Marine Regiment both arrived at San Diego. The 7th will be able to form the 1st Marine Division in 49 days. But until then, <laughs> uh, we can't. The 9th, I think, is part of the 2nd Marine Division if we, if we build out its parent unit. Or 3rd Marine Division. Uh, we can't build that out for five months, though, because the 3rd Regiment doesn't arrive in San Diego for 160 days, and then the 21st in 92 days. But two more Marine Regiments arriving in the East Coast is great news. They're both unlocked, both to the Pacific Fleet, so it's also not a bad idea to try and get those guys forward deployed. So we could effectively have, between these two Marine Regiments and the Division, the 27th Division, in the next week or two, we could start moving forward almost two full divisions worth of troops to garrison and strengthen our positions in the Pacific against Japanese attacks, which seems probably wise to me uh, to do, you know, sooner rather than later. Uh, MTR Cop, thank you very much for the follow, by the way, about three minutes ago. And then I'm also trying to sneak some supply into Darwin, which is low on supply. So we've got about 15,000 supply on small cargo ships sneaking along the North Australian coast. Hopefully we can get those guys in there without getting hit by Japanese air from Timor. I'm hoping that most of his nails and Bettys have been sucked north to support the attack on Java so that we'll be able to sneak some resupply in here. Meanwhile, if we take a look at the intelligence report, we lost nine aircraft in air-to-air -air combat and three operational losses. We're claiming four Japanese operational losses. So 12 to 4 in terms of air losses today. Five Catalinas, four of them shot out of the sky, but that ill-advised attack in the Philippines. Three Fal Falcons destroyed in, over the Java Sea. Two Hudsons destroyed over the Java Sea. Meanwhile, one Japanese Lily, Nate, and Nell, as well as a Zero, lost operationally. We lost a Singapore operationally, which I think was doing some transport. Uh, I'm not quite sure where. And then we lost one H-81A3 operationally, which would have been flying cap somewhere over China. They're part of the uh, AVG unit. Not sure where they would have been flying, though. These guys are set to train, so they shouldn't be losing anything. Uh, maybe the aircraft at Cyan? Yeah, these guys are set to cap over Ankang. So they're on long-range cap, that's why. Meanwhile, we've got a pretty good um, pool building with P-40s in the in the pool, 45 P-40Es in the pool as we kind of start building our production up. 10 P-39Ds, we've got both of those units in abundance in Burma, so having some replenishment airframes is going to be important for when he starts his assault on Burma. We definitely won't be able to keep up, but at least the more we have, the more we can blunt his initial attack. Um, we do have quite a few hurricanes in that theater as well. And we've got 28 Hurricane 2B tropes in reserve. We may want to swap a 2A out. I'm, I'm not sure. 
Um, and then we've got some Mohawks, which I think are P-36s, as well as a few Sea Hurricanes. We also do have one carrier at Colombo, uh, one of our new British carriers that arrived that we only get to keep for a little while. But we've got, uh, where is she? The Formidable, uh, which has 12 Albacore biplane torpedo bombers and 19 Martlet 2s, which are actually F4s, F4Fs for the British. So, anyway. Uh, Halcyon, long-range cap is the order you have to give to everybody regardless of how long the range is. So, if you want them to fly cap over a hex that is not your own, you have to give them a long-range cap order. Even though it's only like 80 miles. Huh. <sighs> When do we lose that British carrier? Hopefully never like a G-Man. Hopefully never. So that's the situation right now. We did just get those three brigades in the Middle East. Uh, if we take a look at reinforcement schedules, what do we have coming? We've got two more infantry regiments for the U.S. coming in the next week. So that's nice. They're both unrestricted to the South Pacific. So again, the U.S. is really starting to buff up its strength. That means we're going to have more than, in the next week, we will have access to more than two full divisions. Four regiments of infantry, two marine, two infantry, and then a full infantry division if we want it. Meanwhile, eight days from now, we're going to get a nice Chinese corps, the, 40, the 46th, which will come with over 200 infantry squads. So we're starting to get into some of these reinforcements. Where do I have the New Mexico? The battleships, Ivan? Um, ship availability, what do we have... Uh, what do we have coming up here? I don't think we have anything big coming up for a little while on the ship side. Some oilers, some subs. I don't get the next heavy cruiser for two weeks, the Devonshire. And then the next carrier is the Illustrious in 28 days. And with the Long Island in 51 days, the North Carolina in 71 days. Am I missing that? Anybody else? The Wasp in 71 days. So we're still a little ways away from getting more carrier support. Um, What about group reinforcement schedule for air groups? So we get some Wellingtons and Aiden tomorrow. 15 serviceable, two-engine, long-range British heavy bombers. Those could be useful in Burma. Uh, we get some F2A, 2P buffaloes. What's the F2A, 2P? What's, special? Why, what's the 2P designate? It's recon. Okay. Doesn't even carry guns. That sounds dumb. Uh, we get some hurricanes in Calcutta. Photo recon hurricanes. Some B-25 recons coming in Calcutta. So we're getting some extra... Re the, by the way, these guys are going to be very, very useful. We don't have many other aircraft in the pool. But having some ability to throw a, a sizable number of recon aircraft over Burma is going to absolutely make things much more transparent for what he's doing. Because right now... Really, my only option is to use bombers in those roles, and my bombers are kind of busy transporting supply to China or re recouping or training or other things like that. So having the ability to have some dedicated photo reconnaissance planes it will be very nice. We get C-33s, two of them, in Australia in three days. We get two B-25s in the Middle East in four days, and then we get three groups of sky trains uh, with 10, 10, and 9. So we get 29 sky trains in the Middle East. So those transports will be useful as well. Some more Kitty Hawks in Canada. Only two of them, but I think we've got a pool of a few of the cat Kitty Hawks. And then in two weeks, we start getting some American B-17s. Although... It looks like they're just fragments, which kind of sucks. Um, okay, so that's the situation on air groups, ground groups, and ships. Ship losses last turn, by the way. Just the one, the Steelmaker. It's nine victory points. And, um, yeah. So that's the situation right now. Japan does have 4,000 more points than us at the moment, but they need three times our point value in order to win an auto victory, I think, this year. So they'd need to get up to, like, 27,000. 
and we've lost almost all of the major bases so far. The one thing they're still going to get a bunch of victory points for is when they destroy the forces in, in uh, Java, and then also when they destroy the units in uh, Bataan. So they'll probably get several thousand points for that, but not anywhere near enough. And then at that point, they've kind of taken all the historical points. Bur I guess the, the Burma campaign is another thing. But, um, yeah, Rangoon's worth 1,400, so that's quite a bit there. But I don't think they're going to get anywhere near that unless they start racking up some absolutely m decisive victories like taking China, routing all the forces there, destroying all the forces there. But that doesn't seem super likely in the short term. How far am I away from any kind of counteroffensive? That's a good question, Ivan. I mean, we've done some localized stuff. We did retake Baker Island with a small detachment of, detachment of Marines to kind of give us a forward position for recon. Um, you know, I think the most likely next major point of conflict, other than just the siege that's going to occur at Batavia uh, and potentially the Batan situation. By the way, so we got bombed there. Did these guys stay in move formation? They did. So all the units that can move stayed in move. They weren't actually bombed. 32 miles out of 46 needed, so they're probably three more days away from getting to Clark Field to hit those two Japanese divisions. So we did launch a counteroffensive in the Philippines. We don't really have supplies to sustain it, but we're doing it anyway. We drove two Japanese divisions back, and we're moving to Clark Field in the next few days to continue the attack there. It'll probably fail, but I want to try and bloody the Japanese as much as possible. Um, I'm expecting a Japanese offensive in Burma before too long. But in terms of like a true counteroffensive where we go and try and take some key bases that the enemy's taken from us, you know, we're probably still a little ways away from that. We haven't really dented the Japanese fleet other than sinking one Congo-class battleship near Mersing. Um, I'd like to think the the most likely location for a counteroffensive would probably be maybe some minor landings on Funafuti, Vadavupu, and Canton to kind of push into the southern Gilberts while flanking the Japanese position near New Caledonia. And then if we take these two bases, then maybe we launch a westward move into the Santa Cruz Islands to try and basically cut off New Caledonia. So the objective really has to be, I'm not sure attacking New Caledonia head-on is terribly wise, so the objective likely is to move north and west a little bit into some lesser defended islands, building up airfields on these underdeveloped islands, and then exerting our influence out over the Coral Sea to cut supply that could come down to New Caledonia to his forces there. Another opportunity potentially for a limited offensive with maybe just dropping like a marine regiment is trying to retake Midway. We could do that probably with one marine regiment, and that might be like our first real chance to try and do something Midway's nice and isolated it's hard for Japan to hold it doesn't you know it does have a level four airfield but I don't think realistically they can support a large offensive there we could even throw some you know we could build an airfield up on French Frigate Shoals or at Laison Island and, and sort of hammer Midway that way um, so you know I'm not really sure Midway might be an option as well so with that being said, I think this is as good of a point as any to wrap this episode up. I hope you guys enjoyed another look at War in the Pacific, Admiral's Edition, my Let's Play series against Lieutenant Rainbow Slash. We had a nice little cruiser bombardment, and we're getting ready for some fighting in Burma and other sectors as well. Uh, I'm hoping it's not too long before we'll be able to maybe not actually launch a counteroffensive, but at least begin to prepare for a counteroffensive in the South Pacific. We have... Four more regiments coming online in the next week between the two Marine regiments that came online today and the two Army regiments coming in the next week. Uh, we also have one division that we can bring into the fold. So that really means at this point in time, in terms of free forces on the U.S. East Co or sorry West Coast, we actually have two two division the equivalent of two reinforced divisions. Uh, we've got two full divisions, and an extra regiment. So um, that's a pretty strong force, plus the Americal Division, which has been moving for a while toward Australia. That gives us three American divisions. We also could, you know, what I think we'll probably do is we'll take those two U.S. Army regiments, put them on the Fiji line, pull two of the Marine regiments out, move them to Pearl, form up the 2nd Marine Division, and then we'll have the 2nd Marine Division, we'll have the Americal Division, uh, both ready for counterattacks, plus we have an Australian, crack Australian division in Australia as well, so we could easily muster 
a three division offensive. Now, where we would need three divisions, I don't know. I think the bigger risk is that the Japanese have a very considerable fleet that would interdict likely any likely counteroffensives. So there's probably some work we need to do to try and uh, start whittling down the Japanese Navy a little bit. But all things being said, I think we're on the right track and we're getting, we're inching our way closer uh, to at least beginning the pre preparations for a counter thrust. With that being said, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying once again, thank you very much for watching, and until next time, I'm out.